Hello, Gerbil fans. My name is Jessa and I'm with Rockstar Gerbil Clan. I breed and raise fancy show gerbils and you can check me out at rockstargerbils.com or on Instagram at rockstargerbils. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about something that's a little sad, but necessary to know if you have rodents or small pets in your life, you may want to do this at some point or another. And that is build a hospital tank or quarantine tank for an injured pet. So stay tuned. Just to put it out there, disclaimer alert, this video is not a substitute for veterinary advice, so if you do have an ill animal, please seek out a vet and go get some help for them with a professional. However, there may be a situation at home where your vet may suggest that you set up a hospital tank for your pet. Well, what does that look like? I am going to show you. So I recently got back from a trip and came back to learn that one of my gerbils was quite injured by his cage mate which is really sad, so I had to separate this little gerbil from his cage mates in order for him to be able to heal and go forward. Cat, get out of there! Get it, get! All right, so let's talk hospitals. So what you want to do is grab yourself a small tank. Now I like to use these guys. Oh, needs a bit of a clean, but he's just got sanitized. This is a 10 gallon tank. Um, it's kind of a small tank, which is really great. Um, in some cases, you may want to go smaller. I have my guy in a five gallon, which I think is wonderful. It's about literally, well, it's literally half the size. Um, and this allows me to really keep a good close eye on him. And it's the point of the tank is to stop him from moving around so much. So you wanna put your gerbil in a tank that is going to prevent them from being able to run all over the place as anyone that's ever owned an animal knows that keeping an animal still when they're injured is really, really difficult. So it's really important that you put your gerbil in a small tank, and this can be a small glass tank, or it could be something like a small critter keeper, or I'd say medium to large critter keeper, if you're going, if you're gonna be purchasing one, medium or large size is ideal. This one just came out of my wash bin, so it's a little wet. Um, but these are fantastic. I use these a lot for traveling, and snap right on, they're super hygienic, they're easy to clean. And they also have this nice little hole right here where you can pop that out and you can put a water bottle or a water bottle guard in there so that the gerbil has access to water but limited space to move around. So this is great because your gerbil can be in here, you can usually fit some sort of a hide as well and he won't be able to go too far and won't be able to injure himself further. And they're wonderful to have on hand if you ever need to clean out an enclosure. You can just pop your gerbils in and you're good to go. So, grab your critter keeper. And then what you're gonna do is this. Here's what I made earlier. As you can see, it's a really small tank, but I've still given him something to hide in in the form of this fancy feast box. He's got water and a really, really small amount of bedding, and most of this is paper bedding with some ripped up paper towels that you can see here. Depending on the need for your hospital tank, you might want to use just paper towel alone. Here, I'm just removing the soiled areas as they're easy to find and replace with fresh and clean bedding. The paper towel is super absorbent and it makes it easy to see whether or not your pet has been urinating or not, because if he isn't, then that is a really bad sign. So I change the paper towel out every day so that the bedding is always very clean and this is really important if your animal is wounded. Here you can see that I've smeared some peanut butter on the side of the tank along with having given him some fresh food and this is just for him to get a little bit of extra protein and fat in his diet while he heals. If your vet has prescribed a medication then it's often mixed in and given with the water. I prefer to administer any drugs by hand using a glass dropper, so these are quite useful to have on hand. And this is because gerbils don't drink very much, and it can be really hard to make sure that they get the correct dosage of medication if it's just given in the water bottle alone. So please talk to your vet about doing this to ensure that you know how to give the correct dosage and how much to give. If your gerbil doesn't drink willingly, you may have to administer any medicines using a syringe by just placing it in the corner of his mouth. Now this is the little guy just a couple days later, as you can see, he is already feeling a little bit better and is back to his noisy, gerbily self, uh, waking me up in the middle of the night. So 
So another thing that I'd like to note about when you're setting up a hospital tank for your animal is where that hospital tank gets placed. So you want to make sure it's in a low traffic area, but you want it to be somewhere where you can still keep an eye on your pet. So somewhere where it's going to be nice and quiet, it's going to get a little bit of downtime and it's not going to be stressed. It's also incredibly important that you either keep your gerbil or your pet in a warm room or you heat the room. So currently I have a space heater going that's heating my room, the whole room, to about 24 degrees, which is a little bit warm, but it's going to be perfect. The gerbils aren't going to be, you know, it's going to be fine for my gerbils and it's going to keep my guy warm. If you can't heat the entire room, another good way to keep your gerbil warm is to get a plastic water bottle, fill it with warm water, not boiling, warm water, and then wrap a piece of paper towel or just a, a thin washcloth around the edge of it and put it in the tank. And this gives something for your animal to snuggle up against if he needs to get a little bit cozy or is feeling a little bit cold, but it also allows them to move away from the heat source if it's too much for them. So that's a great solution if you uh, want to keep your animal warm. Another great way to keep a sick animal warm is to actually hold it against your chest and cuddle your pet. This works great for rats that really love skin-to-skin -skin contact. Gerbils not so much as they do like to move around a lot, but rats and some other creatures would do really, really well against the skin as your body heat will keep them warm. And with that, that is all I have for you today regarding hospital cages. Really simple, really quick video for you guys, but also really important to know for anyone that has small animals. If you drop your animal or anything happens, this is the uh, this is the solution for his well-being. Otherwise, you can check me out on Instagram. I'm at Rockstar Gerbils. I try and post pictures there every day, barring some crazy circumstances. And I also post pictures of the cutest gerbil pups. So if you'd like to see extra cuteness, then I recommend following me there. You can also check out my gerbil breeding program, and I'm at rockstargerbils.com. Other than that, I will hopefully be posting some more videos soon. I just got back from a show, so I did vlog throughout the show, and hopefully I will get that up nice and soon. I have some time to myself with all of, you know, this 2020 coronavirus self-isolation. Everything shut down, so I have nothing more to do than make beautiful gerbil nerdy videos for you guys. So hopefully we'll have a whole bunch for you to watch soon. I'm here to share some stuff. So please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content and I'll see you guys soon.